and speak today, I, wanna, I, I first want to focus on the state of the nation that we were actually left. It's really important because when I get around uh, the electorate, one of the key things that people say to me is, we're realistic. We actually understand what you guys inherited. We know that you're not going to be able to uh, turn the boat around uh, from day one. And, and one of the key points that I wanna, want to raise today, and it was actually highlighted in the Deputy Prime Minister's statement, and it really highlights the state of the economy uh, that we inherited. We found out today that in the three years, in the three years to September 2008, spanning Labor's term, the economy actually grew by less than 1% a year. So for all of the rhetoric that happens on the other side, that the opposition did not deliver to our government an economy that was healthy. And I think this is really important because you know, I think it really demonstrates what we have had to turn around in terms of the economy. And it's demonstrated by the fact that, that, um, that in other Western, in other, in, in other countries, in fact, we had, our economy grew by less than half the growth rate of the Western world and less than one third of the rate of Australia. And I think that really demonstrates from an economic perspective the state of the economy that we inherited. The second, the, the second point that I want to make is around, um, is around the bloated and inefficient public sector that we inherited. There, I've got a couple of statistics here, but a report in 2008, and we've heard a lot from the opposition about what public, well actually a lot from Phil Goff about what public uh, servant chief executives should or should not be paid. But in, in just two years, in a report in 2008, there was a 43% increase in the number of public service staff earning six-figure incomes, not including chief executives. Um, between the years ni June 1999 and June 2008, the public service grew by 50%. Now, this was not a whole lot of frontline doctors and nurses. We know that. We know between 2000 and 2008, we gained 28% more frontline doctors and nurses, but 51% more people working in the Ministry of Health. So we inherited a very bloated and inefficient public sector. And we have had to do a number of things to turn that around. And um, I'm proud of the work that each of the ministers are actually doing in this area. We inher inherited under the last government a very soft law and order system. And I am seeing the effects of this. I'm seeing the effects of this in my electorate, particularly in the CBD. I have had many people, they are across the political spectrum. They are poor people. They are people who are on higher incomes, who are disgusted with the level of crime that they have been subjected to. So I just want to, I really do want to reiterate some of the things that the Prime Minister mentioned in his speech that we have done and some of our achievements in law and order by the fantastic team uh, led between uh, Judith Collins and Simon Parr and um, many other uh, members of Parliament and ministers that are supporting that effort. We've clamped down on the gangs in P. We've taken action on violent crime, including tougher sentences for crimes against children, giving police the power to test DNA, uh, DNA to power to DNA test offenders arrested for imprisonable offences, and we've put in place stronger bail laws. And that's a really important point, because under Labor, they did uh, they really did soften bail laws and, and a number of uh, personal situations that I've had in, in, through my electorate office have related to people who have been affected by the changes under the previous government. We have also, um, I'm very proud of the fact, and, I, and my electorate has benefited from some of the police, uh, that some of the 200 million that we have put into for the 600 extra police that are on our streets. So we have had to turn around what I would call a soft law and order system. We're also doing a heck of a lot in the area of justice and youth crime. And this is in a really important area, and it's an important area that is close to my heart. As someone, as someone who has had um, a family member uh, who has uh, uh, been involved in this area and has been through our prison system, I can say that we have many issues in this area. There are many young people in New Zealand that have felt they have had no other choice but to end down this road. And I can say that um, through the reform of the criminal justice system, improving legal aid, court processes and victim treatment, but also through actually saying to some of these young people there is another way. We are going to be, we are going to be vigilant about actually giving you some other options. That includes education, that in includes having real role models in your life. We are actually going to be doing something to assisting 
these young people. And I just did hear a little bit of a heckle from Ms Mackey about not a job. And I just want to mention at this point some of the schemes that people in my electorate have benefited. I wrote to 4,000 young people in my electorate to let them know about the job ops and the community max schemes that we have put in place. And I know personally of people who have benefited from those schemes. But yes, yes, youth employment is an issue in New Zealand at the moment. But can I just please stress again what this young person said to me when they came through my office. We understand the task that you have been up against. You inherited a very difficult economic situation, plus you inherited an economy that was growing at less than 1%. We understand the economic conditions that you've been under. The other area that I would like to talk about is education. And there's been a lot of discussion about national standards, but again, what really sort of strikes me, it's the parents that come into my office. The parents that say to me, it is my right as a parent to actually know how my child is doing in reading, writing and maths. It is the right of a parent in New Zealand, and I will fight for that right, to understand in plain English how their kids are doing in reading, writing and maths. And when you explain that, and the polls show that, parents absolutely support that policy. However, I do understand that the challenge for us is to ensure that we can get as many people within the school system as well supporting that policy. That policy. But I will fight for the fact that it is not acceptable in this country to allow one in five children to leave school without skills and qualifications. And can I say at this point, though, that many of the speeches that I've heard previously from the opposition, maybe, you know, you, can, you hear in the House often people giving speeches whereby they're not even locking or debating on particular issues, but one core point of difference between members on this side and members on the other side is that we will fight for the right for parents to be able to understand how their kids are doing in terms of reading, writing and maths. And it is a point of difference, and I'm proud to be a member on this side that will fight for that. <laughs> Mr Speaker, in summary, I want to just stress that the challenge that we have is we did inherit a bloated and inefficient uh, public service. We inherited a soft law and order system. We inherited a country where one in five children leave our schools not being in a position, in my view, to actually get a decent job because they don't have the education to do that. And I'm going to fight for everything that we are doing to turn that around, to turn the good ship that is New Zealand around. Can I also say that where we are at is a, is a really important point, I think, in New Zealand's history, because we've done a lot in the last year, as I say, to stop the ship from going over the waterfall. But now we have to make the boat go faster. And the Prime Minister has identified six key areas that we are going to focus on to make the boat go faster. A world-class tax system, better public services, education and skills, investment and in infrastructure, regulatory reform, and the key point that I just want to touch on tax as well is that I think he, the Prime Minister has been very clear and many people have discussed and raised the issue of GST and, and again I just want to make the point that um, some of these proposals will be announced in the budget so we will hear a number of scaremongering from the opposition and we've heard that already today. They've made various assumptions but one thing is very clear that we are committed to ensuring that if there are tax changes that are most disadvantaged won't be worse off. But what we are trying to do is ensure that we create a tax system that gives incentives for people that work hard, improve their skills. We need a tax system that is fairer, and the current tax system is not fair enough. So I am proud to be part of the Prime Minister's government. I am proud to be a national MP, and we are fighting for some very important policies. We are fighting to ensure that those kids are able to leave our school and be able to get a job. We are fighting to give them a better education. We are fighting to ensure that the money that we do have that goes into public services actually um, goes into frontline public services. We are fighting to ensure that those uh, victims of crime get a decent deal and that the, that the, the balance of our, our justice criminal system is not um, weighted towards the offender rather than the victim. I'm proud to be part of Prime Minister John Key's government.